Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to DrBoyceTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. I'm going to talk to you about Robin Hood and the latest on GameStop. GameStop is officially dead. GameStop stock has plummeted to as low as $85.25 at the time of this recording, which is a massive $140 decline from where it was just yesterday. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, you guys know I have been a finance professor for a really long time, and uh, this has been extraordinary to watch. But GameStop stock is dead. Robinhood is to blame. Robinhood might also be dead after they uh, get, get slapped by Congress. And also, more importantly, Robinhood is now dead as an advocate for the little guy. Robin Hood is not representing the little guy and the little guy now knows it. So uh, we're going to break some of this down for you. We're going to talk about it right now on uh, drboystv.com. <clears throat> so I want you to get real comfortable and uh, get ready to have a good conversation because we're going to learn a few things today. So uh, let's get it cracking, everybody. Here we are, clan, the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who got to delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co-sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn it to intelligence. Please, none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here we are. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I hope you guys are having a good day. Welcome to DrBoyceTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on with GameStop and Robinhood. Uh, GameStop stock has uh, died pretty much. Uh, it's dropped down to $85 a share. That's after trading for, if I'm not mistaken, as high as over $400 a share just a few days ago. This has turned into, folks, this has turned into a major, major pump and dump. That's what it is. It was a pump and dump. And uh, I don't know who did the pumping and who did the dumping, but I know there was a whole lot of hit it and quit it when it came to what happened with this money. So I'm going to break some of this down for you. You know, Dr. Boyce is going to help you out and Uncle Boyce is here too. Uh, and we're going to kind of uh, sort of try to try to summarize this in terms of what's happened, where things are going and, uh, and, and, and how things are going to play out in the future. Uh, if you could do me a favor, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. I got to remind you guys that drboystv.com, we are black first. Uh, so if you are black first and you put your, your community first, put a hashtag B1 in the chat, hashtag B1. So let's get, a, let's get started here. All right. So uh, GameStop and Robinhood, uh, you know, th this was uh, very interesting to watch. Uh, the first thing Uncle Boyce is going to have to say to you uh, from the start, and I don't know how this is going to come off to you, but it's, uh, I'm going to have to say this, is uh, I got to start off by saying I told you so. I told you so. If you go back and you watch a video I did about five days ago, I told you. Didn't Uncle Boyce tell you that this was going to end badly? Give me a yes or no in the chat if you've been watching the videos in my videos long enough to know that I told you. I'm not, I'm not bragging. This ain't bragging. This is just me letting you know that maybe I might know a little bit about finance. I, you know, getting a PhD is hard. Right? I, I told you this was not going to end well. I told you that this was not an investment. This was a trade, and it wasn't even a good trade. It was a crazy trade. Um, there's nothing in GameStop's fundamentals anywhere to tell you that this company's worth anything more than $20 a share. Maybe $25 if, if you really want to be nice. If you don't want to hurt their feelings, you might give them $25 a share. 85, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, you're playing a real dangerous game at that point. You're playing a real dangerous game. You know, you, 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 you're telling Lizzo that she's as light as Beyonce. That, that ain't, that, that's not true. That's just a lie. You can't live that lie. You can't live that lie. You know, you, you, you're literally the, 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 the five foot kid from the hood who thinks he's going to be the next LeBron James. You can't live that lie for too long. It ain't going to work. It don't work. So, so GameStop was destined to fall. I think that the question at that point, though, the question that I had was in this massive game, this multi-billion dollar game of musical chairs, and that's what it is. It was a big game of musical chairs to say, who's going to be standing when the music stops? Because that person ain't going to get a chair. And my question was not whether or not GameStop was going to plummet. 
I knew the plummet was coming, especially when I figured out that these these kids on Reddit, these guys on Reddit were not buying GameStop because they want to come in and become activist shareholders and make it into a better company. They weren't trying to buy and hold and, and give the sh- shares to their grandchildren and keep them as a family heirloom. They were trying to make a quick buck. They were, they were trying to jump in and jump out and have some fun. And ain't nothing wrong with having fun. Ain't no, ain't no fun if the homies can't have none, right? And I'm, it's okay with, I'm okay with that. The problem is that that pretty much told me right then that this was going to become a pump and dump that there was going to be a point where they were going to get bored and the attention span on the internet is about 10 minutes. So I knew that the, that, that day was coming. Here's what, here's the shocker though. Here's the part that got me. This is the part I I couldn't predict. I had no idea that Robin hood was going to accelerate the pump and dump by restricting trade on GameStop in a way that I cannot understand. I cannot. I, I I have I have read all the a- academic journals on finance. I've written you know, tons of research papers in in various areas of finance. I know a lot about how markets work and everything else. And and I can't explain for the life of me exactly why Robinhood chose to jump in and do what they did because you can't tell me. I will put this on my late grandma, Grandma Felicia, who I love so much. I put it on my grandma. That 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 there's no valid justification for what they did. There's no valid justification. I don't know if there's even a precedent. I haven't seen anything like this. So when they sh- and, and there's also no way you can convince me. Again, I put this also on my grandma. Sorry, grandma, I love you, but I got to I, you got to help me out on this. I put this also on my grandma that 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 their decision to restrict trade is one of the factors that caused the stock to plummet. And, and, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is when we go from the realm of of shady behavior to something where you're sitting here wondering if somebody's going to have to go to jail. At the very least, somebody's going to have to write some big checks. Lawsuits have been filed. These are valid lawsuits. These are valid lawsuits, black people. They, the, the suits being filed against Robin Hood are quite valid, in my view, because most of these Reddit dudes, the you know, these surfer dudes on Reddit, were all trading on Robinhood. So when you killed off the ability to buy the stock for all Robinhood investors, you pretty much gave that stock a death sentence. So I'm not so mad that about the fact that the stock plummeted back to, to normal. Eventually, Cinderella's carriage does turn into a pumpkin. Eventually, pump and dumps eventually lead to the dump. You start with the pump and the dump is always coming, right? Eventually, uh, the Incredible Hulk always shrinks back down to the size of a regular man. You know that's going to happen, but they gave the Hulk a drug that made him shrink down much faster than he would have shrank down otherwise. And that's the part that was incredibly problematic. That's the part that makes them all appear to be co-conspirators in the great heist of the 20, 21st century. The greatest economic heist of the 21st century took place in broad daylight. This was set it off 2.0 without Queen Latifah, without J- without Jada Pinkett. This was, so this was some white boys on this version of set it off because when I tell you, when I tell you, that 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 the fix was in that there was a heist that took place right now that was what i was seeing let me explain let me explain <clears throat> do me a favor hit the thumbs up button please hit the thumbs up share and subscribe button the reason that it was a heist is, is for this reason i've told you guys a thousand times and and, and and a lot of y'all listening so i'm not yelling at you this is just this is just the old black man in me sometimes you just yell i i maybe your daddy yelled at you and stuff like that it was, it was because he loved you i hope it was Maybe he didn't love you, but I love you. So, so here's the deal. The stock market tends to be a zero-sum game. Trading is a zero-sum situation. When two traders go at it and they're both making predictions on which direction the stock is going to go that day or that week, one might be a bull, one might be a bear. The bull believes the price is going to go up. The bear believes the price is going to go down. That is what we in finance refer to as information dispersion. That means that's what creates trade. It's like it's like the fact that in order to make a baby, you need a mommy and a daddy. You can't have two daddies and make a baby. You, you know, two mamas can try all they want, but they can't make a baby either because you need a mommy and a daddy. So in order for a trade to occur, you tend to 
on average, need a little bit of information dispersion, meaning that you need two people that have two different perspectives on the same asset. So the bull and the bear get together and the bull and the bear make the trade. Well, one of them is going to be wrong and one of them is going to be right. They can't both be right. If they're if one is predicting the stock is going to go up today, the other one thinks it's going to go down. Well, the bull and the bear can't both be right. So at the end of the day, somebody wins. At the end of the day, you have what is pretty much what you might call a zero-sum game. <clears throat> a zero-sum game means that at the end of the day, either the bull is right or the bear is right. Well, if, if the bull is right, then the bull makes money. If the bear is right, then the bear makes money. Well, so so let me let me break this down with GameStop. Stop. Here's the deal with GameStop. The market valuation of GameStop right now, as of this recording, is about six point seven billion dollars. That is the value of the company. If you were to take all the shares outstanding, multiply by eighty five dollars a share, you would get six point seven billion dollars. Previously, GameStop hit a high of roughly. $450 or $460 or something ridiculous like that. I don't remember exactly what the number was, but I know it was way too high. And so, so basically, in this amount of time since GameStop has hit his its high, about 15 to 17 billion dollars in wealth appeared to disappear. And I say appear to disappear because it didn't really disappear. It didn't go away. It didn't go to an alternative universe. That market value that was in GameStop stop, GameStop stop. I can't I can't say that, right? GameStop stock. There we go. That wealth that magically appeared in the pump and dump with GameStop stock, that wealth is in somebody's pocket. Like the bulls and the bears got together, the traders got together and money exchanged hands. Some of it was originally lost by the billionaire hedge fund managers. We talk, They talked about how the billionaire hedge fund managers lost a combined total of about $12 billion or something crazy from the Redditors. But remember, when that stock hit its peak, the reason it went to four something is because people were still buying at that point. And this is the danger of the pump and dump. This is why I told you all to be careful if you decide to play with this fire, because the danger of the pump and dump is that the, the insiders tend to do okay, but it's the outsiders who get burned in this game of musical chairs. So the reason that that stock hit $480 or 460 or whatever that number was when it hit its peak is because somebody showed up to the market and said, I'll buy that stock for that insanely, ridiculously high price. And let me tell you this, I'm going to tell you this right now. The people that were buying at that price were not the insiders. The people buying at that price were not the billionaires. The people buying at that price were not the hedge fund managers who went to Harvard. The people buying at that price were not the people who did the analysis and knew that GameStop stop, I keep saying it wrong, GameStop stock was not worth more than $20 or $25 a share. No smart, rich person in all of history has ever been willing to pay $460 for an asset that they know is worth $25. That is the exact opposite of what you do if you want to get rich and stay that way. That would be called, as Dr. Claude Anderson refers to, as the doctrine of unequal exchange. That's what that is. That's when you're giving something valuable away and, and you're receiving something of less value. So, so this is why Congress should be getting involved. This is why Congress needs to investigate the hell out of Robin Hood. But here's the thing. Your politicians are liars. They're corrupt, dirty liars who are owned by the corporations. So you have to take their investigation with a grain of salt. But the reason Congress should at least hold a hearing on this in Robin Hood is because that $15 billion in wealth that appeared to disappear, that came out of the pockets of regular people. That came out of the pockets of you know maybe some twenty you know twenty five year olds who around the country who who wanted to jump in on the Reddit rebellion and and start buying the stock because they kept thinking it's going to go up. That that came out of the pockets of the people who were fooled into believing the the, the forums when they said the game stopped to a thousand, dude. GameStop's going to a thousand, but well, let me just tell you something. Part of that pump and dump, I bet I bet you every nickel in my bank account that a lot of those people leading that rebellion 
were selling their stock before the whole house burned down. They're not selling their shares at $85 a share. They probably got out about $299. When they started seeing which way the wind was blowing, that's when they exited the building. So the people who got burned up were the people who showed up late. Because in order for the price to have hit the peak that it hit earlier, somebody had to be buying at that price. And those are the people that securities laws are supposed to protect. They were not protected. This was a travesty. This was ridiculous. They were not protected. They protected They protected these investors about as well as they protected the Capitol building when all those uh, crazy toothless hill, hillbillies from Tennessee decided to go storm the Capitol that day. They, 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 about, about that same level of protection. And by the way, that whole situation, it, that also looked like a situation where the fix was in. you telling me you're spending a trillion dollars a year on your military and the Pentagon is right down the street. So you got trillion dollar soldiers around the corner and somehow little old ladies are taking selfies inside the Capitol building. Well, that that, that wasn't you didn't get invaded. That was you opened the door and you let them go in for whatever reason. I don't know. But that was the fix was in. Come on now. I ain't stupid. So so they defended the investor the same at, at the same level that they defended that Capitol building the day all the toothless rednecks decided to break in and tell you that they wanted Donald Trump to be the president. Hit the thumbs up button. Please hit the thumbs up, share, and subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Firstsharestock.com, that's a URL you can go to if you want to get free support on your investing endeavors from the Black Business School. Uh, you can sign up totally for free. I will make an offer to you to get 90% off on the mini class if that's what you want. But if you do not want that, just understand you can join for free. So go there. There's a free training there to get you started and also more information I'll send you on how to become a better investor because I got you. I'll make sure that you know everything you need to know. Let's move on. Let's hit the thumbs up button. Please hit the thumbs up button. So so here's what here's what I want you to understand, too. This is this is why the, the, the robbery took place in broad daylight. They did a heist in broad daylight because they did not give a damn what you think. They don't care. They, they, they do not care if they take a hit to their PR. Because because you're talking about billions of dollars on the line. When when you have billions of dollars on the line, people will do damn near anything to protect that kind of money. Think about it. Some of y'all from the hood, y'all know people that probably got killed over two hundred bucks. How much how much killing do you think would happen if if you had two billion dollars or five billion dollars at risk? Some people might they might nuke a whole city for two for, for two billion dollars. So so the fact that this heist took place in broad daylight. And Robin Hood engaged in this egregious behavior that really can't be explained. They, they said really confusing things when they went on CNBC, <clears throat> things that still don't make sense to me. They, they, like, like at one point, the CEO of uh, Vlad, Tino, Tino, whatever his name is, Vlad says something like, yeah, we needed to we, we, we needed to go borrow two billion dollars in cash, but it's not a liquidity problem. And that didn't make any sense to me, because when you need to go borrow two billion in cash, then that means you have a liquidity issue, right? He said, he said, he said, we, but we don't have a liquidity issue, but we needed to go borrow liquidity. So, so well, I don't understand. So you, wait, you're telling me that you had to go borrow $2 billion or whatever the number was, but you didn't have a liquidity issue. Well, that statement is contradicted by your actions. That's like me saying, you know, I, I, um, I, I, I just took a big dump in the bathroom, but I didn't have to, I didn't actually have to go. I didn't have to use the bathroom, but the bathroom smelling pretty bad because I was in there like releasing my bowels. Like that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't like I'm not hungry, but I just ate an entire cheesecake. Right. But it's but it's not a hunger issue. I just ate the cheesecake. And I, I, I don't understand. What are you talking about? That, that doesn't make any sense. I can't I can't not. I, I'm not smart enough, apparently, to understand how needing two billion dollars or whatever that number was. And then restricting trading because you don't have the capital necessary to do what you got to do and the liquidity necessary to follow through on the trades is not a liquidity issue. It sounds like it was, wasn't just a liquidity issue. It sounded like it was a very severe liquidity issue. And it sounded like it was a very unique liquidity issue because I didn't hear Fidelity saying, well, we shut down all the trades on this stock because well, I didn't hear E-Trade on, on CNBC saying, well, we just decided that we wanted to just stop people from trading. I've never heard them say these things. I'm not saying this, this can't happen. I'm saying I haven't heard this from them. So that tells me that you've got a liquidity issue and you've got a stability issue and you might have a corruption issue. You have a corruption issue. You certainly have a conflict of interest when Citadel 
pays your bills, and Citadel also loaned money to Melvin Capital, the company that benefited the most from your seemingly problematic and corrupt activities. So, so, but we've talked about that. We broke all that down. So, if you want to hear about the Citadel, uh, the Citadel Melvin Capital relationship, you can go watch another video on that. I uh, go to uh, make sure you subscribe and just check out some of the other videos because I've been talking about this all week because this is just unbelievable. Like this whole situation is something that really, really, um, I think serves just as an excellent case in point to understand how the game is set up. If you want to ask me, some of you ask me, do I think that the game is rigged? The answer is absolutely yes, the game is rigged. But does, does that mean that you shouldn't participate in the game? No, I'm not saying you shouldn't participate in the game because there's money that can be made. The key idea is not so much to worry about whether or not the game is rigged because life ain't fair. You know, my daddy taught me that when I was young. So maybe that's why I got lucky. I don't know. But I never went, went into life expecting life to be fair. So is the game rigged? It's absolutely rigged. But if you find out the game is rigged, that's how you. That's when you go find out, well, what are the rules and who, which direction is it rigged in? Because people who are smart about making money know how to figure out which way the wind is blowing and which way the game is rigged so they can get on the side that's going to rig in their favor. So the game being rigged should not keep you out of the game. It should just make sure that you stay hip to the game so you understand what's going on. So so let me let me kind of just finish this up. Alicia told me it's time for dinner, so I got to get up out of here. Uh, when a black woman speaks, I listen. So she told me the dinner's up there, and she's she, she made some lasagna. She said it's a good batch, so I'm about to go get this lasagna. Here's the deal. <clears throat> In summary, uh, Robin Hood has a lot of questions to answer. I don't think they're going to answer them to the satisfaction of the general public. I think Robin Hood is going to take a massive hit to their reputation. Their IPO is going to get body slammed. Their $20 billion valuation should be probably cut in half, maybe less, because they're they lost a lot of goodwill with the public by engaging in whatever the hell was going on at that company. They're going to have major problems with uh, going forward for, for that. Um, number two, uh, I, I, I think that this is also an opportunity for those of you who are into cutting edge technology to look into the DeFi, the, uh, the, uh, the, the decentralization of finance that's occurring within the crypto market, because that's going to be the wave of the future. That's th this whole situation is, is pushing millions of people in that direction, particularly young people who are not afraid of a computer, who are not afraid of change, who are not afraid of, of, of things being a little bit different, who are also a little bit sick and tired of the old boys network. I think that's a wonderful thing for the future because the deregulation or the decentralization of finance is good for the world. There's a whole DeFi market occurring right now in crypto, which is why I think that it, you may want to take a look at some of the great investments that exist within crypto. The crypto market has been taken off the last few days Largely, I believe, largely because uh, because of what's going on with, with this craziness in the stock market. Uh, if you want to see my crypto portfolio, feel free. You can go to drboyscrypto.com. I have a screenshot of all the crypto I own. You can feel free to take a look at what I bought if you want to go if you want to go and 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 jump in. Uh, it's up to you. Um, the last piece is is that you know this this was a pump and dump that was as clear as day. Um, there's nobody that understands anything about finance who did not see and understand that this was going to end badly and with a lot of people being hurt. Uh, if you made money, I congratulate you. But I reiterate to you that there's a difference between trading and investing. There's a difference between uh, participating in, uh, in, in a one-off situation where you're talking about one stock in one company versus investing in a diversified portfolio over a long period of time. The first method is very similar to gambling. The second method is how you build family wealth and you build a legacy that's going to last long after you're gone. So after this is over, just dust off, move forward, invest the right way. And then if you want to jump in and have some fun, do it. But make sure you you don't mistake the participation in this Reddit chaos um, with, with actual investing. That's very different things. So, so I hope that we get each other. I hope we understand each other. And I'm going to tell you what, Robin Hood, <clears throat> no matter what they say to Congress, no matter what Congress does, that still won't be enough. Because believe me, for every little thing they tell you, there's a hundred things happening that they'll never tell you. And also never forget that your politicians are in bed with the corporations. So whatever punishment and penalty they come up with in this situation, it'll probably be a slap on the risk. So, so moving in the direction 
of define or de the decentralization of finance is good for the world because what you need here is you need more transparency. The reason Robinhood did this shady stuff, this weird stuff, and then came out with an explanation that didn't add up and didn't make sense, and then tried to even use Elon Musk to try to get credibility behind their stupid shady response that even Elon probably saw through is the reason they did all that is because there's not enough transparency. There needs to be transparency. And that's the direction that we're going to have to go if we're going to make this country better for everybody. So don't be scared. Um, I'll break it down for you. Uh, I wish you the best and God bless you. Keep investing. Hit the thumbs up button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button on your way out the door. And uh, also uh, make sure, feel free, like I said, you can go to drboyscrypto.com if you want to see my crypto portfolio. And also subscribe to financialjuneteamtv.com. That's a YouTube channel where we break down financial analysis from a black perspective every single day of the week. So God bless you. Have a good night. I'll see you soon. Peace. Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm, great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in this state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now, family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick to co sign for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and buy back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs, now we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence. Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn it to intelligence. Please, none of what you hear, half of what you see. Let's break it down here on Dr. Boyce TV. Here